Hello, this is the Ramblings of an Indisciplined Mind podcast for Monday, December 14th, 2015. So Saturday I got my LASIK done, and in fact I am driving to the doctor's office now for my follow-up appointment, but I thought I would share my experience with that. So I got there and, you know, they had me leave my glasses with my wife, so I'm, I'm being led to this place, and they, they did a couple tests on my eyes, just because it had been a few months since I did the evaluation to make sure nothing had changed, and we got through that, and then they give me a Valium. I've never really had a Valium before. I, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I'm not even really totally sure... exactly what the effects were. I think it was supposed to make me more relaxed. And I guess I was feeling fairly relaxed. But, you know, the doctor came in and and I thought it was kind of funny. He comes in to have the discussion with me after I've had the volume as far as discuss what exactly we're going to do with the eyes. Um, whether we're going to do something called monovision where one one eye is, is set up for close vision and one eye is set up for distance vision or they were going to both be distance vision or, or what. And I was a little concerned about both of them being distance vision because I spend so much of my time in the, you know, between me and a computer monitor distance, which is not that far. And you know, he says, yeah, if we, if, we, if we stuck to the distance, you would be... You would be um, having to you would be having to wear readers. You know, like when I'm on a computer, when I'm reading a book, and I I, I wasn't really thrilled with that. Um, but the monovision usually they, they like to do that if somebody has had uh, their contact set up like that. My wife's contacts are basically like that, so they gave her the mono vision. So, but he could do something for me that that, that was called a mini mono, where they kind of halfway do the right, do the one eye, so it's, you can see some up, up close stuff. So, I opted to do that. Um, you know, if I absolutely hated it, for a little bit more money, I could always make the right eye also distance vision, but. But that wasn't terribly likely to happen. So, anyway, so they pulled me into the surgery room. They had me come into the surgery room. You know, you walk in, walk out. This is, you're not, I mean, there's no anesthetic of the, of the kind of the normal variety other than, you know, the volume. And they had me lay down on this bed. Uh, you, you're not strapped down in any way, shape, or form. Your, your head kind of sits in this little in this little uh, cup, if you will. And there's this laser that comes out o- over top of you. So the laser itself is, is, is this machine and it's ringed by all these really bright lights that are just shining right in your face. And so to begin with, they covered up, I think it was my left eye first. So they, they, they put a little like a disc over your eye and they tape it down. And then they came in to do the right eye. It, and it gets so bright. Uh, I was, you know, and they're doing several things to your eyes. So first of all, they're, they're, they're putting these spreaders on so that to hold your eyelids open. If you've ever seen a clockwork orange, I think it looks about like that. Um, those weren't necessarily the most comfortable thing. Um, but they were okay. I'm trying to figure out how Waze is wanting me to go because it seems to want me to do... Oh, yeah, no. So, they're getting ready to have this laser come down and, you know, they've done the spreader thing. And 
it felt like they put some other sort of ring-like thing on there, and then they put this this disc on your eye, and apparently it's got some sort of suction involved because they put it on, and and one of the or, or the doctor put it on, and then one of the assistants said to him, you know, suction on, and and uh, they may have put something on top of that because once the suction gets going, your image, your my vision turned to like a negative, or at least it was like really. It was really dark. I could still kind of see the lights. And then they... And then they... Had the laser do its thing. And, and what it's doing there is, is what's called cutting the corneal flap. And so they're basically cutting your, a hole in your cornea. But they're cutting... It's not all the way around. It's you know, enough so that you, on one side you got a flap. So they do that. I mean, there's no pain. Uh, it's not really. It felt like the laser came down to sit right on top of whatever the heck they had on my eye. So it wasn't necessarily comfortable, but it wasn't painful. So then the laser did its thing in a relatively quick amount of time. I mean, seconds. And they went and did the other eye. Yeah. And and so when they're taking that one dissing off, they go you go suction off. And so on and so forth. And they go to the left eye. You know, one of the things that was really kind of neat was the interaction. There were at least three people in the room. And I think there was somebody who was like learning, um, that was watching. But their, the way they would interact, you know, first of all, they had, they put uh, stickers on my shoulders they were telling what they were doing for each eye, so there was no, so there was no doubt. And then, as they went from one eye to the other eye, they would say, "Okay, so we're going to Keith's left eye, and we're going to do the corneal flap." And everybody would agree. And 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 later on, when we moved to the other laser, you know, okay, we're going to do his right eye. The numbers that we need to have are blah 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 blah. Uh, one of the assistants was reading this, and then the. And then the doctor would, would would recite it as well, so everybody was, you know, was on the same page. That yeah, they, they all understood what they were doing, and there were no misunderstandings as far as what was being done. It was really kind of it was really kind of neat. It it, it, it kind of reminded me of, of some of these some of these procedures, you know, like Nathan Lowell does one when they're getting ready to, to pull out, you know, where they're they're going through this very regimented thing to make sure that everything's ready and everybody understands that everything's ready. Uh, so they did, did my left eye, and that was pretty, you know, same, same basic deal, you know. Got the suction thing, and they do, do the cutting. And they say, okay, so now we're going to move you over to the other laser. And so they literally just, but what it felt like to me, I couldn't really see a whole hell of a lot. Once they took the stuff out of my eyes, I was allowed to close my eyes. And believe you me, that was all I wanted to do was close my eyes. Um, they went to the, they went to the, um slid me over to this other laser and this laser had a red light on it and then it had a little blinky green light on it and this was the one that was actually going to be doing things to the lens of my eye through the opening that making the corneal flap did and they did some other things to repair the eye I mean I had the spreaders on again I don't remember what, what else they did it felt like they put some other stuff on there it was really kind of hard to tell because it, um, it's just you know the vision just wasn't wasn't there, and I had this red light from this laser in my eye that was doing all sorts of weird things. Uh, sometimes I would see you know two or three lights, and I wow you were going slow, and, and, and I kind of felt like uh, you know Picard you know, there are three lights or whatever, uh, and sometimes it was really tough to tell see the the blinky green light at all. There were some times where the uh, the red light would hit something, and it would it would be it would be like red static across my vision. I mean, it looked like static, um, and it, but it was all across my vision, and it was the red refracted red light from this laser. And then when they got to the point where, and that was just when they were like lining stuff up, and they had to get things lined lined up very carefully and so they would actually all three of them he's lining it up and my nose was getting in the way and all three of them basically had to say yeah it looks good 
um, there there was something that they were they were probably there was a camera there they were looking for and they would say okay yeah we're lined up or uh, no we lost it and I'm trying to figure out why we're stopped at the screen light uh, probably because of the ambulance that's sitting here uh, but uh, you know so they were when, when all three of them agreed okay yeah we're lined up right to do it then they would start the treatment and, and I believe this time they did my left eye first and, and maybe that was because they already had the spreaders on they didn't, and they didn't take the spreaders off. That might be the case. <laughs> I don't really remember to that level of detail. But they, they did that eye, and one of the women, as they were doing it, was calling out the time, 15, because I think it was supposed to be 15 seconds, uh, at least for the left eye. So 15, 10, 5, and then it was done. And, and that actually helped quite a bit and they said at the beginning that it was going to be they, they you know they announced okay so we're going to do a 15 second uh you know i don't want to I, I don't i don't think they said burn it was going to be a 15 second treatment probably is the term they used uh burn would kind of freak people out <laughs> um and then they they essentially they must have put the flap back in place and he had like a little brush and he's like brushing across this thing. My wife thought it felt like a squeegee to her. To me, I could tell it was like a little brush. And so they're brushing it, and he's obviously trying to get it situated just right. And then the laser would go again. And, you know, if you've ever had a filling done at the dentist, and, and you know, that, 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 that smell as the drill is drilling in and you kind of get this strange burny smell. I had a little bit of that, which, you know, the smell itself wasn't that bad because I've, I've smelled it before. It was a little strange thinking that it was coming from my eye. <laughs> um, and so at that point, so they got done with that. And I think they applied the laser again and it, it, for lack of a better phrase, it welded the flap back down on my eye, I believe. And then they switched the left eye, so they take the stuff off my, my, or the right eye, excuse me, they take the stuff off my left eye, I can now close my eye, uh, which I was very happy for, and then they do the right eye. And the right eye, I think it was because of the mini mono thing or whatever, but they, it was gonna be a longer treatment. It was 22 seconds instead of 15. And I got to tell you, those seven seconds between when it started and when they st hit the 15-minute mark and I started getting the five-second countdowns, that seemed like a long time. Because <laughs> when it hit 15, it was like, okay, we're almost done. You know, even though we really weren't, but it just felt like, okay, now I have, a, I, I have an idea. Of, of where we're at, it was 15, and then not too much longer, it's 10, not too longer, it's 5. And, and during this, they wanted me to keep both eyes open, if I could. And, and I, I opened up my left eye as much as I could, but I just literally could not open it, open it very much, uh, at all. And then that was about it. You know, they got me all undone and unhooked, you know, the stuff off my eyes. And uh, he had me sit up. And he had me look at a clock on the wall that wasn't too far away, but I probably wouldn't have been able to read it without my glasses on before. And he said to me, uh, so what time is it? And it was 2.07 I was able to read. My appointment was at 1, so, but we had paperwork and, and stuff to do. So I think I was actually in that room for about 20 minutes. And then they give you a pair of I guess you could call them goggles. They're really not goggles like we would think of. Steampunk goggles. There, there, there is a thing you wear over your face that, uh, with some rubberized padding, rests flush over your eyes to protect them, so you won't accidentally, you know, knock them with your hands or something. And so you're supposed to wear those for the remainder of the day and, and overnight that night. And you're just supposed to relax and sleep. And 
and, and wear those overnight, and then the next day you can pretty much you can pretty much do normal activities. You're not supposed to touch your eyes. You're not supposed to try to get your eyes get wet. I don't think. And you're supposed to wear that that protective thing overnight for the next week. So we're driving home. The wife's driving home, and I'm probably more out of it than I was in out of it. In it, I felt like I couldn't sleep much at all. But she assures me that I was sleeping a lot. My eyes hurt. They burned, um, and they were just watering like crazy. Uh, every so often, just the amount of fluid I had in there would, would, would bug me, and I would just so I just open my eyes a little bit just to let some of the fluid come out. Um, and, and it was just it was really bothering me quite a bit. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like super painful, but it was, it was to the point where I I couldn't stop thinking about it, you know, about, oh, my eyes burn and they, and they felt kind of like you got sand in them, which is normal. And we, and we we had to get some drops. So we stopped at the store and got drops. You know, the wife went in and got them and I just kind of sat there and probably snoozed in the car. And... We got home and I just sat in a chair for the rest of the day. And I had her put, I think the Army Navy game was on. And I asked the wife to put that on or something on. Just so I had something to listen to besides the quietness of the house. And I listened to that and I did a fair amount of sleeping. And I still couldn't open my eyes. I was, I was, it was okay to open my eyes for like things, things like going to the bathroom or if I needed to eat. I had her make me some toasted tea sandwiches sometime after six, and I could I could barely crack my eyes open enough. They were still watering to you know, basically see where the sandwich was so I could grab it. And uh, but then I don't know about seven eight o'clock, something like that. My eyes suddenly started to feel a lot better. And when we went to bed, I, I, I was able to open my eyes and actually see a little bit more than I was. But before I could see, but it was really, it was really, there, there, was always, there was a lot of haze, and that's part of it. I still have some haze, although it's a lot, lot better. But uh, part of that was just because of the incessant watering. But, but when we went to when we went to bed, I felt like I could open my eyes. You know, I was still only open about halfway, um, but at least it, it felt better and it wasn't being quite so annoying. And then come morning, I was fine. I they uh, they felt really good. And and the wife, I'm I'm reading the second book in the Mistborn series right now, and it's a Dead Tree book. And the wife's like, you probably won't be able to read your book your dead tree book and I'm, th- I'm thinking well that's okay I need to start reading a Christmas carol on my Kindle anyway with Kindle I can make it as big as I needed to uh, but I'm able to read that I was able to read my phone that morning and Sunday morning and I was able to read my Mistborn book so I actually looked at one of the looked at one of the uh, the bottles of this of this uh, eye drops I gotta put in and it's got this teeny weeny print on it and I can read it. So I am getting used to the whole mono vision thing, but it seems to be going pretty well. Really. I I I, I am getting used to it and I figured I probably would. So you know like so like reading now, reading signs on the freeway that I'm on. I'm probably really only seeing that with my left eye. What I'm seeing with my right eye would be kind of hazy, but I'm not really seeing it, seeing any any of the overlaying haze. Yesterday I was looking at stuff from a distance and I would kind of see the haze, and I'm not seeing that right now. So of course it is kind of wet and rainy, so I do have a little bit of hazy going on the on the windshield, but I don't. I think I can tell the difference. So you know what? What am I? I'm. I'm. I'm it's almost one o'clock on Monday, so I'm about 48 hours into it there. And, uh, yeah, I think I'm happy with it so far. I, 
it's very nice to just wake up and be able to see and not not have to not have to put on glasses or put on contacts or anything like that. So yeah, I think I'm going to really like this. Ways locked up my phone. Excellent. Excellent. Anyway, so that's what I thought I'd talk about today. I thought I'd share that, share that, um, that experience. What's what the heck is, is doing this podcast for? Than uh, you know, sharing when I get something uncomfortable done. But, uh, it really wasn't that bad. I, I won't say that I was enjoying it, and I was glad when it was over. But I've, I've. I've, I've done much worse, you know, the, the very worst, there was one point he was doing something on my eye, on one of my eyes, and it hurt a little bit, and, and he must have, I must have grimaced or something, and he asked me if anything's wrong, and I told him it hurts, and, and they put some more drops, and she must have like an antiseptic drop that they were putting in, and then after that, it was okay, um, and it was just that one time, so, I, I really can't complain about, about it, and, uh, So far, I am enjoying the results. So, uh, tomorrow I'll be heading back to work like usual. So, I will be talking to you then. So, be seeing you.